Hello and welcome to Storytime with Mr. Ryan. On August 8th, we celebrate the birthday of Matthew Henson, one of the world's first Arctic explorers and co-discoverer of the North Pole. From an early age, Henson was enamored with exploration, with going into the unknown, with uncovering something that has never yet been seen before. Today we read Keep On, the story of Matthew Hansen, co-discoverer of the North Pole, written by Deborah Hopkinson, with illustrations by Stephen Alcorn. Let's hop on in. Matthew Hansen was born in a Maryland cabin at a time when boys dreamed of finding glory, planting flags at the ends of the earth, making the unknown known, and recording their names into history books. Young Matt had that same hunger to explore, but most folks would have laughed at his dreams, for Matt was born in 1866, just after the Civil War, a time when poor black boys like him had few chances to roam the next county, to say nothing of another country, the Seven Seas, or the top of the world. By the time he was 13, Matt was alone. He set out to make his way into the world, trudging the long road from Washington, D.C. to the harbor of Baltimore. What a bustling place it was! Gulls screeched, men shouted and rushed about, loading and unloading ships of every size. And Matt stood alone, keen as an arctic fox, eager to pounce on any chance he could find. Matt spied the Katie Hines, a three-masted vessel so sharp and bright she seemed like a star gliding on water. And when he spotted her proud, white-haired captain, Matt begged for a chance to go to sea. It was breaking the rules to let a boy under 15 sail, but that old sea dog took a liking to him and Matthew Alexander Henson became his cabin boy. For the next five years, Matt's school was the world, his classroom the boat. Captain Childs taught him history and mathematics, and soon Matt could navigate by the stars, tie sailor's knots, and fix or build most anything. After Captain Childs died, Matt left the sea, unsure of his course. He was working in a store in Washington, D.C., when a naval engineer named Robert E. Peary came looking for a hat and found an assistant besides. Matt proved so able that Peary asked him to join his next expedition to Greenland. Soon Matt realized Peary's heart was set on one goal, to be the first to stand at the top of the world. But the pole was not an easy prize, and Peary and Matt had much to learn about the harsh, cold north. Matt studied with new teachers now, the Inuit. Of all the explorers who entered their world, Matt was their favorite. They gave him the nickname Mari Pollock, Matthew the Kind One. Matt took the time to listen, to learn their language, and to make friends. He studied how to build and drive a dog sledge, and how to dress and hunt in order to survive. Hardworking, skilled, and kind, Matt Henson earned the respect of all. Through the years of struggle and heartbreak, the explorers faced furious storms, shifting ice, and always always the unrelenting, desperate cold. On Peary's 1906 expedition, he and Matt set a record, reaching farther north than anyone had before. But storms forced them back, the top of the world still out of reach, nearly 200 miles away. Peary was determined to make one final try, and so on July 6, 1908, Peary's team of explorers set sail again on the Roosevelt, 
a ship so strong it could push through the Arctic ice. They spent the winter locked in the frozen sea, readying sledges, supplies, food, stoves, and more than 200 dogs. They hauled everything by dog sledge to the northernmost tip of Ellesmere Island. From this base camp, they would launch Peary's last attempt for the pole. On March 1st, 1909, Peary and Henson's team set out across the frozen polar sea, over endless ridges of sharp, drifting ice, aiming for one point on the ice at the top of the world, 413 miles away. Peary's plan used support teams of men and dogs to break trail, build igloos, and haul and cache supplies, inching the assault forward day by day. But there were only enough supplies for one small team to make the fast and final dash of five grueling marches 133 miles home. By April 1st, Peary had sent everyone back except Matt and four Inuit men, Uta, Zeglu, Ukwea, and Aginwa. For Peary could not get along without Matt Henson, experienced, resourceful, brave. Matt was better than anyone else at driving the dogs, fixing stoves and sledges, breaking and finding the trail, urging their Inuit companions on. Without Matt Henson, there would be no pole. On April 3rd, as they moved across the ice, Matt slipped and fell through. Cold, killing water closed over his head. Matt could not the grasp the edge of the ice with his thick gloves. Then, in a flash, strong Uta was there. He grabbed Matt and pulled him out as if, for, as if he were picking up a puppy by the scruff of its neck. He tore off Matt's sealskin boots, beat the water from his bearskin trousers, saved the sledge and Mari Pollock's life. And then they simply kept on. On April 6th, 1909, Peary planted a flag on a spot of the ice. The pole, at last, or as close to it as they could figure. After 18 years, thousands of miles, the thin, tattered flag they always carried looked as ragged and worn as Peary and Matt. But now, at last, these brave explorers could watch it fly from the top of the world. Thank you guys so much for watching this wonderful story. I hope you enjoyed learning about Matthew Henson. This is not a figure that I learned about in school, but I love Matthew Henson's story. It's truly an enduring one. What a brave, interesting figure, Matthew the Kind. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed reading along with me. Please feel free to check out other stories on this channel, or if you're looking for fun activities you can do from home, go ahead and check out veronalibrary.org children. Until next time, I'll be seeing you. Bye-bye.